Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Curtis, and I'm one of the paleontologists here at Fossil Crates. I get to talk to you today about one of my all-time favorite dinosaurs, Triceratops. Triceratops has a long storied history, and initially it was thought to be a kind of bison, and when it was first described by Charles Marsh, and so he attributed the two horns, the eyebrow horns they found, to an animal called bison, Altacornis. And then he got another one sent to him, and he said, well, we're going to call it Ceratops. And he thought at this time, it's, it's believed based on his writing, that he believed this animal was bipedal and had this huge head. When the third one showed up, um, he called it Triceratops because it had all three horns on its head. And he believed that he even wrote that this animal's head would have weighed it down and then had caused, mo caused modifications throughout the body and led to his extinction. Uh, as a result, Triceratops uh, was really confusing, and calling it a mammal initially caused all kinds of troubles to the paleontologists who were attempting to date the region. It came out of Denver originally, where uh, he was trying to figure out how old it was. And all the material there suggested to the geologists that this Denver area was the Lake Cretaceous. But when eminent Charles Marsh said that it was part of a mammal, well, it couldn't be part of the Cretaceous. So this set all of the geologists into a tizzy. But Marsh's field guys kept sending back more and more product, and eventually he came to the conclusion that Triceratops was a dinosaur. And he ultimately named numerous species of Triceratops. And at one point, there's been, I believe, 17 species of Triceratops named and numerous genera. Uh, today, Triceratops is believed to be two species, and these species live one right after the other. So it's thought that Triceratops porosus gave rise to Triceratops horridus. Uh, Triceratops has, I've read accounts of roughly 500 Triceratops skulls have been discovered in the field. And it makes sense. The Triceratops skull exceeded eight feet in length with this huge, massive frill. The eyebrow horns could go three feet long or longer. Triceratops, think about a rhinoceros. The Triceratops was up to three times as long and three times as heavy as a modern day rhinoceros. And its skull puts the rhino to shame from just sheer, huge, massive power. Uh, the Triceratops itself has numerous skeletons, not just the skulls that have been preserved. And my team has personally been involved with excavating Triceratops where there have been massive wounds, where teeth bite, teeth marks of a Tyrannosaur have ripped out the back of its, its back. Uh, one particular animal survived an encounter and lived on and, and ultimately died a very painful death. Uh, from sepsis and infection from this Tyrannosaurus bite that took a large chunk of its ilium out. Triceratops are also found with facial wounds, and individuals have recently studied the height and location and, and size of these facial wounds and have realized that what's a great mash for them is another Triceratops horn. So it's thought that these Ceratopsians use their horns not only for defense, but also for offense against each other trying to fight over territory or mates. So they would lock horns like you see modern um, antlered animals today do. The Triceratops itself, the frill is thick and protected a, a vulnerable neck area. It was also very powerful. It's, it's the back, the pelvis of a Triceratops has great power. And its arms, unlike all the dinosaurs that are straight erect, they're slightly bent, which would have allowed it to have moved side to side a little easier to have brought its head to bear. The Triceratops teeth are pretty cool. And in the ultimate herbivore crate, we provide a tooth of a Triceratops because it has two roots and it formed what's called a dental battery. The next tooth would be underneath this root, pushing its way up and it could have up to five teeth in a row. And so it had a nice cutting surface on top. They were always sharp because the teeth were always pushing the worn out ones out of the way. And it had upwards of 800 teeth in the most of these individual teeth that we found. Um, easily 400 teeth in any given Triceratops. However, only the top row were actually actively cutting. A Triceratops didn't chew in the traditional mammal sense, but when it took a snip, and if you look in the illustration behind me, you'll see it had a beak. All ornithischians have what's called a predentary bone, which has this beak device. And in Triceratops, that beak would have been very powerful. It could have cut through the toughest of plant material. And then once it was snipped, its tongue would pull it into its mouth, 
and it would go to work moving its jaws forward and backwards. And these teeth would have acted like a rasp or a, or a grinder and just ground down even the toughest of plant matter would have had very little chance of surviving long in this mouth with its powerful jaw strength and its great teeth, the sharp teeth, the wall of teeth. So Triceratops, extremely successful animal. They lived in herds, at least some of them, some of its relatives did because they had been found with hundreds dead in one location, probably from a, fl like a flash flood event or a volcanic event in one case. But the remainder of them, it's not known if they lived like the, the big, full, giant triceratops, the, the biggest of the big, did it live a solitary life or did it have a herd? It's hard to say. Um, but definitely we know that a fully adult triceratops would have given a fully adult tyrannosaurus a run for its money. The injuries that a triceratops could have wreaked havoc on if it, if it was able to stab into a predator would have been potentially fatal if it was able to get a good gore in. So Triceratops is an adult, not particularly bothered with. We do find many scavenged Triceratops skulls with evidence of animals eating them after death. So we do know they were consumed. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, some of them have evidence of surviving attacks from big predators. Triceratops, iconic, deservedly so. Anytime you're three times the length and weight of a rhinoceros with one of the largest skulls of any land animal, you really can't go wrong. Love Triceratops. Well, I hope you enjoyed this little vignette. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave any comments below. We look forward to interacting with you, and we hope to bring you some more information soon. Thank you, Guy Lee. Adios.